Right now, you gotta be asking yourself, what am I watching? This is a review of the Eye of Eye App four person camping tent and how I used it bikepacking. We're also including an interview with Brett Compton and how he used it with his kids camping in a state park. Okay, so we have found our spot for our tent. It's right here. This is where we're gonna set up at. And it just needs a little bit of cleanup. But take a look at this view that we are gonna have in the morning. There is an awesome lake right across the trail from us. Let's go take a look. Beautiful lake. Water's nice and calm. Look at this. This is what we get to wake up to in the morning. Have morning coffee with. Man, you cannot beat that for December. Here's the trail that we came in on. Right down there. Nice and quiet. But it's time to get the tent set up. So let's get busy. Okay, now, as you saw, that was pretty easy, um, even for one person. It, it, it does come in three pieces. Um, you've got your outer rain fly, which you want to put on first, then your inside tent, and then your vestibule footprint. But it's pretty easy. There's lots of room. All right, so let's uh, take a look around the outside. Pretty nice. Pretty easy to set up. Take a look at the back side. There you go. Lots of room, lots of room, lots of room. All right, let's load it up. Okay, as you can see, we have plenty of room for my gear. Um, I still have a few things in the backpack to put inside the tent. I have lots of room for sleeping, my clothes, my bike fits in there, will cover up completely. So it'll be out of the rain and out of the, the morning dew. The trailer fits in there just fine. It's over there in the corner. And there's still lots of room to get in and out. This thing does make an awesome bike packing 
tent. Hey, my name is Chris Cargolino with The Outdoor Life, and today I have Brett Compton with me, and oh. we are gonna go over a tent that uh, I am reviewing. Brett has a couple of kids, and he actually took it out into the woods so that he could use it. He's used it, you've used it twice, right? Yep, uh, my kids' first two camping trips have used it on. Okay, so yeah, he's used it twice, and he's pretty happy with it, and he's gonna give us some of his ideas and some of his thoughts. So Brett, you had a chance to use it a couple of times. Mm -hmm. um, why don't you tell me a little bit about the location and kind of like what the weather was like while you're using it. So I've used this tent twice now. I've been primarily using it inside of state parks here in Central Florida. I have two children that have been going with me, ages six and three. The weather has been fairly nice. It's been sunny, high, mid to high 60s, and in the overnight, uh, mid to low 40s, both times that we've gone out camping. And each time, I've been fairly pleased with the tent's overall use during our camping trips. So when you first got to the park and you opened up the tent and you saw all bits and pieces in there, what were your initial thoughts? So my first impression after getting the tent laid out in front of me was that it was pretty standard. It came with stakes, poles, a rain fly, and a base section uh, for the tent where we would be sleeping. It seemed, nice. it seemed very uh, standard of uh, any tent I had used previously in a car camping style uh, setup. Not, not typically something that you would carry on in a backpack, but, def oh. but definitely for car camping. Yes, this is definitely uh, more towards camping within campgrounds, not necessarily carrying to a primitive campsite or going backpacking with. Yeah. Okay. However, the weight was very nice. It wasn't cumbersome. It was easy to move around the campsite. It wasn't, the weight was not a concern. Um, the material, when you opened it up? Uh, the material seemed um, pretty standard to what I would expect for a rainfly and for the housing of the uh, sleeping section of the tent. Uh, what I would say that was different or unique about it when I opened it up was I realized the tent poles actually were used within the rainfly instead of within the base section of the tent. So that was a little different. Yeah, that was one thing that I noticed different, yes. Okay, so let, let's go ahead and talk about the setup. How Did, did you find it easy to set up? Um, was it confusing when you looked at all the bits and pieces or did it kind of go together pretty smoothly? Well, I would state that factors always go into learning to use a new tent for the first time. Of course. Are you in a rush? Uh, have you set aside time to look at the instructions or just to <laughs> not be, uh, have someone looking over your shoulder judging you if you can't get it put up the first time correctly? Uh, for me, I picked up the tent and went straight to a campground and it was already dusk. So I didn't really give myself on my first setup <laughs> a lot of good time to look it over and set it up non-pressured situation. However, it went pretty smoothly, I would say, for that type of uh, situation. Nice. Uh, the visual pictures and the instructions were very helpful. That's what helped me realize the tent poles were gonna go through the rain fly. Right. And uh, I would state this tent can be set up by one person if you give yourself the time to understand how this tent sets up. If you're in a pressure situation, I could see someone getting frustrated, but again, that's another factor you have to consider. It's not necessarily the tent is the cause of that uh, <laughs> dissatisfaction for t um, setting it up. So there's nothing like being under pressure when you're in a campground with 50 RVs around you, all at 100 grand a piece, and you're setting up your little tent and chasing around your kids, and yes. you're holding some instructions in your hand and everybody's watching you, knowing this guy is his first time here. <laughs> like Chris mentioned, having kids in, um, in a campground, even if it's their first trip or they've been camping before or being around RVers who have been there all day, they, they took their time setting up and they've been doing it for years. Um, it can kind of like chip away at someone's ego if like you feel like you're a camper or a backpacker. Um, however, I'm, I'm a professional, dang it, I can do this. <laughs> Yes, and all of us guys or people that think that, oh, I don't need to read the instructions. Yeah, you may not need to read the instructions because you just have the innate ability to put something together, but it doesn't hurt, especially when there are good visuals uh, included with the tent, and this tent did provide that. So on your second time around, it was pretty easy. Oh yeah, um, second time around, I knew that the rain fly was gonna have the poles in it. Right. I knew that's where I needed to start. Right. 
it pretty much created the shell dome of the structure. So once you got the poles in place, you got the uh, one side staked in, and you basically, like an accordion, pulled it towards you. It, right. The layout was very smooth, um, and getting it uh, set up uh, easily can be done on under 10 minutes. Right on, right on. Especially if you have kids that are running around, kids that want to help, especially <laughs> young ones, because mine, again, are six and three, and they wanted to be part of that process. So right. they were able to hammer in stakes, and even with that, uh, it, it's a tent setup that's very easy to do. That's cool. So now you've got your tent all set up. Um, you standing back and you're looking at this masterpiece that you created, and you're going, dang, I gotta get all my gear in there now. So what was your first impressions? My first impression of this tent when I had it set up was I realized there is a covered section of uh, the vestibule that will allow for me to put uh, some of the gear that I have that I want to keep dry overnight inside oh, of it. Cool. And that's separate from the actual sleeping quarters? It is separate. Oh, that's um, cool. The sleeping quarters um, itself is nice. It has a single door, but the door uh, getting into the sleeping quarters has is made up of two layers, a bug net and then an outer uh, shell that gives you complete privacy. Yeah, like a privacy door. Yeah, yeah. But you can still open it up and keep the bugs out with the wind if you wanted to. Yes. Okay. Um, so when I got the tent set up and I was looking around to figure out uh, what I needed to get done next. I have all this gear in my car still. I have my kids running around. It's getting dusk or whatever the case may be. I'm like, okay, first things I need to get done is the sleeping arrangements. And then from there, we can look at, say, fire and food afterwards. So um, I look at the section of the tent where we're going to sleep at. I brought a queen size eight inch blow up mattress and uh, we got it pumped up, got it in the uh, inside the sleeping area. And we were looking at how we wanted to situate it. If we wanted to push it all the way to the back, center it. Right. And more or less, the queen size uh, inflatable was best centered in the tent for us. So with the fact that there was the vestibule there, you had you were able to make a decision of just putting your sleeping equipment, um, your clothes and things inside the sleeping area yes. and all of your other camping equipment outside. It's still protected under the vestibule, but yes. unlike backpacking where everything has to go inside, you, you were able to just separate that out and give you some more room. Yes, exactly. We only right. kept uh, inside of our sleeping area, our clothes, um, our, sleeping bags or blankets or whatever we were deciding on using and the sleeping uh, pillow or the inflatable queen size bed that we chose to bring. So the whole queen size bed actually fit in the sleeping areas, but it, you still had extra room left over, a little bit. We had, we had a little bit of extra room on each side. I would state that on each side, um, we could fit um, bags that we had brought for clothing um, or things that would keep us entertained in the tent um, at nighttime with the right kids. Yeah. So it wasn't too cramped even with a, a full queen size mattress inside there? Um, I would state the queen size mattress does encompass a lot of the space. Yeah. Um, and I would state the, the main base part of the tent is mainly for sleeping, uh, which makes the vestibule, having the vestibule that much more uh, uh, Nice. Yeah, nice. Yeah, it's a, a great. Nice. It's a great benefit. It keeps <laughs> any, any of your camp chairs dry overnight from yeah. any type of condensation or um, all your cooking equipment yeah, and stuff like it that. Keeps, your it boots. keeps it dry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right on. So. so now you've got your sleeping quarters are all arranged. You've got your clothes and your sleeping bags and the kids' equipment. You've got all your cook stuff out in the vestibule area, um, and now you're getting ready to. Eat. You got dinner done. Get ready to go to bed at night. So. What was it like using it for the first time? Uh, using the tent for the first time, uh, it's like anything for the first time. You're always trying to see if you notice anything inside of it. How does it feel laying inside of there? Are your feet touching when you're inside the tent fully stretched out at night? Do you feel claustrophobic or yeah, yeah those kind of things? If you have, say, the door open but the bug net in use, are you able to feel a breeze come through? Are you having any bugs come through? So you, what were your kids' What, what did they think about it for laying down in there for the first time? So my kids' impression of the tent when they first got into yeah. it was this is super exciting. The first tent they've been in camping and they were ready to get into it as soon as it got dark. Uh, yeah, and Brett's a backpacker. He, he, he can go 20, 30 miles a day. He'll spend four or five days out in the woods. 
So this was an exciting time for the kids for the first time to actually spend the night in a tent with dad doing what, what dad likes to do. Yeah, we had headlamps for lights inside uh, the tent or at nighttime in the campground. So our kids got to go inside the tent. They got to put their headlights in. They got to get in their PJs. They got to lay down. And nowadays, through connected devices, they were able to really relax and enjoy themselves inside the tent. They thought it was a really cool place to be at. And they felt comfortable and safe yeah. and secure. Yeah. Like yeah. being out for the first time, they weren't all wigging out because they were out in the middle of the woods listening to all these noises and stuff. Oh, um, not at all. They, they felt a very- Right at home. Yeah, right at home. Very, they had a lot of comfort right off, uh, right at the beginning. Okay, awesome. And then sleeping throughout the night, you didn't have any issues throughout the night? So I mentioned that the weather had dipped into the mid to low 40s. Uh, we had sleeping bags and we had our queen yeah. size mattress. mattress. Keep you up off the ground. Yeah, yeah. To keep that, to create an insulating barrier between right. the ground and us. The tent performed very well. Usually in the morning times from backpacking, you wake up and there'll be condensation oh, inside, of, inside of your tent, right. potentially on any gear that's laying against the outer shell of your tent. But that's where this tent has a shining point. It's rain fly is an outer shell to where it doesn't make contact with the base section of your right. sleeping section of the tent. So that entire area that we slept in was dry. There was no condensation. There was no wet. So there's like a little... There's um, an air gap. Like a four to six inch gap between the tent meshing itself, the shell of the tent, and your rain fly. Yes. That kept the condensation off of you guys inside. Yes. Because you got three bodies in there breathing all night long. And it kept all that condensation off of you and your gear. Yes. So that was, that was awesome. Yeah, for me, I noticed that that's one of the specific things I didn't yeah. notice about the tent compared to my backpacking tents to where with the rain fly on or with the rain fly off, still there's condensation that occurs inside of my uh, backpack. Right on, okay. So you have got two good uses in. Um, you've got them in with your kids. You are a backpacker. You're used to tents that range in the four to $500 yeah. price tag range. You don't know how much this one costs. I never told you. So you're comfortable with high-end expensive tents. What are the pros about this tent that compares to not necessarily a $450 tent, but a tent designed to do what you did, which is camp out of your car? This tent fits what it was designed to do. It was designed to provide individuals with a place to sleep that seemed very comfortable and it also provided an additional space to the vestibule that allowed for dry coverage storage or if you were out and it, the weather changed and it was raining, you could have a seat underneath something if you didn't have a tarp or some other camping equipment that would keep you uh, dry or being able to sit underneath. And the vestibule did have a floor in it, so. Yes, it did. You had the option, it had a removable floor actually. You could either have the ground, the whether it's grass or gravel, however, mm -hmm. or there was a a dry barrier, a dry barrier that we could set up, and yeah. I used it both. I used it the second trip. So, what are some of the other pros about it? Did you notice, like, are the zippers easy to open and close? Does the material feel like it's going to be pretty sturdy? The talking specifically of the internal sleeping section of the base tent, the walls of that tent felt very strong. I didn't see any issue with that. I didn't feel thin or that if I leaned up against it too hard, it could potentially rip. Right. Uh, with ultralight backpacking, there are tent materials to where if you press too hard against it, you could potentially right. cause rips or tears. That was very nice about this tent. For car camping purposes, it felt like it was made from good material. The base section of the main sleeping part of the tent had a very thick material to where it would have a longevity usage towards like being laid on top of gravel. Sometimes here in um, Central Florida, you get on top of RV tent pads, and it felt like it would hold up to that type of abuse. Durable. Yeah, it'd be durable, yes. Right on. So, of course, not everything's perfect. What are some of the cons that you saw that kind of stuck in the back of your mind that stood out that might be a, an issue? Or maybe not, it's just nitpicking, one of the two. Who knows? Things to maybe nitpick about, as you said, the single door into the sleeping area had uh, a double zipper to where you had the outer material that would give you complete privacy, but if you unzip it, you could still use a bug net. That whole two zipper system right there didn't necessarily work for me because it was just trying to get in and out. I had to open or close two doors to get in and out. Right. But that's just maybe a personal preference, something that maybe it could have been done differently. If I wanted to have more airflow, they could have maybe made that a window instead did you, of the Did the you door. leave the doors on the vestibule open at night to let some air through? Or no? 
Uh, no, I actually closed it, but that wasn't a problem. Okay. Um, okay. It may be due to the temperature range. That, that's the reason why I closed it, to make sure that there was no wind blowing in yeah, into the uh, oh. internal section. The second thing that I would look at with this tent for an adult is that there isn't standing room. Uh, if that's something that you're specifically looking for is to stand up without having to be hunched over or anything like that, that would be something that this tent doesn't provide, and that could be a drawback for some individuals, but it's, again, it didn't stop the functionality of the tent. It did perform very well for us. Yeah, and there is enough room, though, if you wanted to put a small camp chair inside the vestibule. If yes. it was raining or something, you could leave the vestibule, one of the windows or doors open, and sit inside there and yes. read a book or something oh, yes. and stay dry. Yes, if you had a generic camp chair that was that you would take shorties. to a ball game or yeah. anything like that, you could fit it inside there and sit comfortably. So tell me a little bit about uh, your final impressions. Is this something that you would pay for, and how much do you, you know, how much would you be willing to pay? Is this something that you would recommend to a friend? You know, I can do it a little bit. So I'm trying to break from that because I do feel that I would use it because sometimes the entry point into camping can be too much, and you need mm -hmm. all this stuff. And sometimes just getting yourself going is like or started is a really big deal. And I feel like this tent does that. It gets you started, it gets you out there. You okay. You get to enjoy what you meant to do. Like the idea was to get out and go camping. It wasn't to have like a Shangri-La palace when you got there. You wanted to go and explore something. You wanted to be outdoors. Yeah, but it's, and it's a little bit different. I mean, yeah, a lot of us have a tendency to be a gear snob, but when you show up, you know, with 40 pounds of gear, mm -hmm on a week-long backpacking trip, you gotta have a lightweight tent. And you're gonna be around a bunch of other people with lightweight tents. It's gonna be difficult. I mean, your backpacking tent is only a pound and a half. This one is a little over five, so. Well, that's where I'm trying to go at. Like, when I started backpacking, I got what I needed to get started. Right. And I was gonna use it for longer than what I did because I I, I bought a tent from you. Anyway, I, I bought a tent from you because it was gonna get me started. Right. It fit, it fit the range of my needs that I needed. Right, and there's nothing wrong with going with, with used in the beginning as long as it's been well taken care of. Because it is expensive. Nobody can drop, you know, not everybody can drop $450 for a single person tent mm -hmm. that weighs a pound. Yeah, but really. that's not the purpose of this one either. Oh no. Um, so to directly speak about what I recommend this tent to someone, yes, of course. This tent I would recommend because it does perform very well at what it, uh, it's providing. It provides a, a nice dry environment to sleep in. It has a covered rain fly for the shelter that gives a vestibule for mm -hmm. keeping dry storage to sitting out underneath if there's raining or the weather's not particularly nice at a moment. It does things very well. The rest of the things that I critiqued earlier potentially about not being able to stand up, those things are more like wants instead of needs. And this tent right here performs very well at giving you the things that you need to go camping. And I would use it again. I will be using it actually next weekend again. We are going to be camping in Ocala National Forest with my children at Juniper Springs. And so it, it would. It's also big enough for two adults if you wanted to take. Um, of course. A guest with you. Two adults, and I know nowadays people are talking about bringing their dogs or their pets with them. Mm -hmm. The vestibule area, it does enclose, it has zippers so it can be completely closed. It does provide room or separation if you wanted to have your dog in a different area at night, but still be close enough to where it couldn't get out. In theory, you could throw another sleeping bag in the vestibule yeah. since it has a, a covered floor if you wanted to. And yes, maybe that friend is not as close as you thought she was gonna be, so she has to go outside, I don't uh, know. Who so knows? you get put on the couch in the vestibule <laughs> while she gets to stay up. Well, but at the same time, time if you were two adults inside of the tent and you brought a pet your pet could stay on either side of you and lay down at night so there's things about this tent that do perform very well and because of that I would use it again I would recommend it to people that are trying to get into camping people that actually want to go and explore where they live this tent helps them do that and uh, I'm not sure of the price so okay let's talk about that real quick there's a value to everything so what would you 
What would you pay for a tent like this if you was to walk into somewhere or online and buy it? What would you feel comfortable paying? Looking at its size from being in it, I would state that this tent should fall underneath $125 in that ballpark because I state that above that range, you start getting tents that have more rooms, meaning that you're getting into four or five person right. or larger tents, and then the price for those tents are usually within a 125 right. to 175 and up for beginning intermediate level nice. on tents. And yes, comfort is a big thing, and this tent does provide the comfort, as I mentioned earlier. Comfort, security, and weatherproof. Yes, especially keeps my stuff, my gear dry, me right. dry, uh, my right. family dry. There's no condensation. That was a very significant thing with this tent. So at the end of the day? Yeah, I would recommend it. Two thumbs up. Yeah. From Brett, the Gear Snob Backpacker.